Hey guys, welcome to Deep South. Today, the most amazing fruit ever. Hi, I'm Wanda, and my husband Danny and I live on a 10-acre homestead in South Mississippi. We grow some of the most amazing fruits you've ever seen. Fruits, berries, everything. Wild, planted, whatever. So today I'm going to show you a few of those in bloom and some of the fruit that's on them and show you what they look like. It's pretty awesome. Here at Deep South, with all the berries and fruits that we have growing, I thought I would just kind of walk you around the property as we have things that are growing in season. We're all about eating in season. We have an edible landscape, and it's very much my garden of eating because we can eat from the yard almost something 365 days a year. So the first thing in the uh, spring of the year that gets ready would be our berries and we have a multitude of berries here we have strawberries we have two strawberry beds that we're going to be reworking this year and uh, turning those beds into carrot beds and moving the strawberries um, we usually freeze those but sometimes I put some in the freezer because Danny just likes some fresh uh, we make stuff with them like strawberry shortcake and uh, I have made strawberry preserves with them but we're not as crazy about them, really sugary as we are, just fresh or frozen. While the strawberries are blooming, we also have huckleberries that come in first. The huckleberries are wild all over the property, and I walk through the woods and forage for them. But we also have many in the yard and around our trees, our huckleberries, plus our sidewalk. We transplanted, about five years ago, we transplanted huckleberries to the sidewalk so now I can walk down my sidewalk and pick huckleberries so huckleberries are a biggie for us and we make jelly we make pies um, we eat them fresh I put them on salads they're awesome so huckleberries is a real big deal here we have the tame blackberries that we planted uh, the Arkansas traveler is a really big berry but we also have wild blackberries all over the woods here we forage for those and then what we call a dewberry. A dewberry grows real low to the ground, on, on, uh, runs the ground, and it looks like a blackberry. Many people will think they're picking blackberries when it's what we call a dewberry. Then the blackberry comes in after the dewberry, and it puts on a long cane that kind of grows taller. So there's a difference in dewberries and blackberries, and we use those for jams and jellies and pies. We have mulberry trees. We have two different types of mulberries. One is a really small mulberry. That tree produces thousands. This year, the, that tree froze and all the berries fell off. They were, it was totally loaded and they all fell off. Uh, the other two mulberry trees are, were planted a couple of three years ago and they're tall. They're doing great. This year, again, the freeze got all the mulberries. They, they're a longer mulberry. Uh, long purple mulberry, every one of them fell off. So we had absolutely no mulberries this year. Um, so usually we make jelly with the mulberries. It's a tangier berry, but you can make anything with it that you would any other berry. The other berry that we have would be the blueberries. We planted 50 blueberry trees, three different varieties, no, four different varieties in there, I believe. And ours are right at four years old this year. We ended up with several gallons of blueberries off of them. Um, blueberries, we keep them in the freezer for the most part. Uh, we like them fresh and a lot of stuff. We make pies and I make a fresh blueberry pie with that is just out of this world. And then we make them in smoothies. You can put them in anything you want. But we do can some so that we have uh, blueberry um, pie filling type stuff. We've used it in jellies and we've made blueberry jam. Another thing we added a few years ago were raspberries. Um, the raspberries are wild raspberries because they have the thorns on them and they're not the caning type, they're the vining type. Uh, Danny built a trellis and I built the soil up. We put them in some really poor soil. I had to build the soil up um, and they have started producing last year pretty well and this year they did decent. Um, again, the freeze messed everything up, but we got a, a little harvest of the raspberries this year. Um, we're going to try and build the soil up some more over the summer and fall, and hopefully next year have a really 
excellent harvest if it's not if it doesn't freeze them really early. Another thing that we have going here that comes in pretty quick when the berries are starting to slow down would be peaches. Um, we've just harvested most of our peaches. We still have some on the hill near the cabin um, that we have, but the, the tree here by the house, we totally harvested all of them off of it. We make peach slices, peach jelly from the peelings, and then we make um, peach jam sometimes. But overall, we slice some and cook them down and just eat them fresh. We love them that way. Um, the peaches, we have one peach tree by the house, three or four on the hill by the cabin. We planted another new one by the cabin, and we planted some in the front. So we've added many peach trees because our original peach tree is very old, and at some point we will lose it. Um, so peaches don't live that long. So we are not depending on one peach tree. We have them planted in multiple areas around the property. About the same time that peaches come in is the apricots. We have apricot trees. This year the freeze killed all of the apricots. They were, it was loaded for the first time. We, we planted these trees about four years ago and they bloomed, had little bitty apricots all over them, but the freeze got them. So we're looking forward to an apricot harvest maybe next year for the first time. Also plums and mayhaws. Plums uh, we have three trees, I believe. Again, was loaded. Every freeze got them all. So we did not have any plums. The mayhaws uh, produced probably uh, just a handful. Um, last year, we got a good harvest off the mayhaws. The freeze did a really good number on our early crops of um, fruits this year. And with the plums and mayhaws, those are some of the most amazing jellies you've ever made. May has a beautiful, beautiful red color. Plums, according to what kind of plum it is, is usually a very red color. About the time the uh, peaches start to wind down, the apples kick in. We have one main apple tree that produces quite a bit of apples, and from it we make apple slices, apple sauce. I even use the peelings and make apple um, jelly. Um, we just like our apples. I put them in almost anything. I have an apple cake recipe, an apple fritter recipe. Um, you can do anything with apples that you can. And we have the one main tree that produces, but we have added like six new apple trees in the last two years. And we have a couple of other trees that are older trees that produce occasionally. And one of Danny's apple trees, he has grafted three different types of apples on it. And we're waiting to see if it will produce and make three types of apples on one tree, which is pretty awesome. We usually are harvesting figs this time of year. Um, we harvest around 25 to 30 gallons of figs off our one fig tree. Over the last year or two, we planted other fig trees, and we also have Danny's grandpa's fig tree. Um, this year, the freeze uh, killed back some of it, and our giant fig tree had to bloom again. So instead of harvesting figs right now, we are waiting probably sometime the end of this month, maybe. Uh, they're small. Grandpa's fig, we harvested a few off of it, but it has it rebloomed. If we have more on it, uh, we have a new little fig tree down by the carrot beds. It is loaded with figs. So we're looking for a decent fig harvest this year, even though the the um, freeze did get some of it. Our muscadines are growing really well. This year they are growing abundant. There's a lot of muscadines on them. Um, these are the purple muscadines. Um, seem to be really, really doing well. Almost ready to harvest. We will start harvesting within, probably within the month. We usually take the um, muscadines and juice them down and then we put the juice in the freezer and we take some out for breakfast and so we usually have a good bit of juice for a while in our freezer we also have the scuppernongs which are a bronze scuppernong it makes a white juice the muscadines make a red juice and so the scuppernongs are just doing fantastic this year this is the 
the first year that we've had this many, Danny moved the vine down and added to the, the whole system over the last two years. So it's all producing really well this year. And so we will be juicing those also. Then comes the pears. We have three different type of pear trees. Um, one of them is a hard pear, one of them is a soft pear, and the other is a moon glow. And the moon glow was loaded, the breeze got it, but the hard pear and the soft pear seem to have made it through and there's quite a few pears on it and we will be harvesting those. We make pear slices, kind of like I do apple slices. I've made pear sauce, similar to applesauce, and I've made the peelings and made jelly. And pear jelly is some of the awesome, most awesome thing you've ever seen. It, it's just awesome. We also have um, a variety of trees that most people do not grow. One is a pomegranate. I did not know they grew here. A lady about four years ago gave me a tree. She, had, she lived about 10 miles from us, and she had four or five in her backyard. Some of them is tall as 20 feet tall. They were hanging in pomegranates everywhere and she gave me probably 10 or 12 of them to bring home. That is, the, it, it was amazing to add to a salad and I made pomegranate juice and things like that. It is just the best ever and very, very high in nutrition. So my little tree is small, but it's blooming now. It has little fruit on it. Um, I'm not sure if It'll even make this year because the tree is so small, but if it doesn't, once it gets bigger, we're hoping for pomegranates in the future. The other thing that we grow here is a pineapple. We have many pineapples, and a couple of years ago, we had our first pineapple harvest. One pineapple got really big. The other two were smaller, but they were delicious. We let them stay on the plant as long as we could, and we harvested and took it off and let it ripen in the house. And you're talking about sweet. This year, I think we have three or four growing. So we will see if we have a pineapple harvest this year. Um, banana trees. We have lots of banana trees. We've never had a banana at all on these trees. Most people say it takes 18 months. Here, we got up to the probably 12 or 14 month period and we had a hard freeze. We have not had any bananas on our trees, but we do have banana trees here. We also have citrus. We've had many lemon trees over the years, and it seems like a freeze would kill them back. So last year we bought a lemon tree and put it in a pot. We take it into the greenhouse and bring it back out. Orange tree. This orange tree has been amazing. Um, one year, two years ago, I think there was about 60 oranges on it. For that little bitty tree it was just unreal and last year i think the freeze got it and it only had about 20 or so on it it wasn't many this year it probably has 20 or 30 or more on it it's looking really good danny had to prune it kind of heavy because the freeze got it in the beginning of the year this year and he had to cut some of the limbs off so what was protected enough we have quite a few oranges on that tree and we have some crab apples. These are flowering crab apples and they can be made into jelly or they can, like we do, leave them half the time for the birds and the animals to get into so they'll leave our other fruits and vegetables alone. On your homestead you really want a variety of fruits and berries and that's what we have here at Deep South Homestead, an edible landscape with not only vegetables and herbs, we have fruits, berries, and nuts. So guys, I hope you enjoyed a little bit about the fruits that we have growing here at Deep South and the ones that we are harvesting. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.